All right, guys. So this video, I, I you know, I wanted to make it a short, and I will. But I, I think it takes it's it's worth doing a little bit extra because if you can do this problem, I think then you've got it for the exam. And this is this is really a good tail of the tape if you're ready for the genetics when it comes to this pedigree stuff. Okay, so. Try this problem. Try to get the answer before I get to it. Um, even pause the video at some point and try to get, and try to work it yourself because this is a critical problem. I really like this problem. If I was one of those people making the exam, this is one that I would use. And all I would later do is just change how I'm going to word the question. But if you can work through this, no matter how I word this question and get all these right, I think then you're ready. All right, so let's get to it. It says, in the above pedigree, what is the probability that Y is a carrier? Is it A, 0%, B, 25%, C, 33%, D, 50%, E, 67%, and F, 100%. So we got basically every scenario in the book. So you, you definitely can't guess on this one. So then you ask yourself, what do I know? Now, again, pause and try to solve this on your own first, and then see, and then see if you're ready to take the actual exam. At least that's how I, how I would do it. But in this situation... You look at this pedigree, obviously it's not in every generation, so you've eliminated basically the dominant, right? And so what are what are all my choices that I could possibly do? I could do mitochondrial, I could do autosomal dominant, I could do uh, X-linked dominant. And we know it's new, we know it's not the dominant ones, right? Because it's not every generation for the most part. We know it's not mitochondrial because mitochondrial would say that the uh, a positive female uh, we, we'd give it to all her offspring, and, and we just don't have that that scenario here. Uh, so then we're left with autosomal recessive or X-linked uh, recessive. Well, first of all, when you see these, that you you, know, you need to know you know is the circle a male? Is the, is the square male? You know what what are these? Because if you don't, you know it can come back to haunt you. So you need to know that the square represents a male and the circle represents a female and you can come up with whatever kind of creative scenario you want for that all right so the the mom is negative and or at least the mom is doesn't uh phonetically you know uh phenotypically i should say uh express herself with this but one of their children does right so obviously mom you know mom's a carrier uh, if, if we're going through recessive route. But anyways, let's just eliminate some of these choices. So we're, we know it's not dominant. We know it's not mitochondrial. So now we've got autosomal recessive or X-linked recessive. So we know for it to be X-linked recessive, well, let's, let's think about this. You know, this is a, this is a female, okay? Female's positive. Female's got the um, X, uh, XX. And so she had to have both of them to, you know, if it was... Um, if it was recessive, she's got to have both. Because let's think about this. If this was X-linked um, X linked recessive, what would happen? Here's dad. Now, for this to be a girl, he had to give what? He, had to, he didn't give the Y, he gave the X. So if this was an X-linked recessive uh, inheritance, what would dad had to have been? He would have had to have been positive, right? Because he only has one X, and if it was X, it was on the X chromosome, he would have had to have expressed it, but he didn't. So therefore, we're going to have this lean of autosomal recessive. Okay, so that's where we're at. So autosomal recessive. Now, and that kind of helps us at least start. So you have to know that. So you better cycle through these. But really, where the, you know, where the purpose of this question comes is right here. Okay, the question is, what about this guy? Because we're saying, what's the probability that Y is a carrier? And now they could reword this a million different ways, right? They could say that, well, what the parent, the family comes in, they have one positive kid in this scenario, and they're asking, well, if we have another child, what's the chances of it being a carrier? What's the chance of it being positive? Now, you should be able to answer all those questions, okay? All of them. Now, if you can't, then you're not ready. And that's why I'm doing an extended version of this video for that. So anyways, in this scenario, we know it's autosomal recessive, right? And so I'm just going to use the, a, a, a big A and a little a for this. Now, I could use any letter, okay? I could use any letter. Now, if it was X-linked and all that stuff, I'd be using the X, but I'm not, all right? So I'm just going to randomly use the letter A. I could, I could use the letter J, K, L, M, N, O, P, doesn't matter. But for this purpose, I'm just going to use big A, little a for the 
for this autosomal uh, condition. Now we know that, let's just call this one uh, the mom, and let's just say dad was upstairs there. So we know mom was a carrier, okay? And we also know dad was a carrier, okay? So if we did the old high school, you know, kind of punt square deal here, two by two table, we know that this one would have been lucky, right? They didn't, they wouldn't have even been a carrier. Now to express this, you gotta have both, you know, kind of gotta have both genes. So in this scenario, dad gave uh, the good one, mom gave uh, the one with the condition. And in this scenario right here, mom gave the good one and dad gave the one that was, uh, had the condition. And of course this box right here, little a, little a, this person expressed it and that's what we got right here, right? So the chances, if they knew ahead of time that they were carriers due to genetic testing or whatever, and the question said, what is the probability that one of their children would uh, actually express this condition, then you would say what? You would say one out of how many, how many possibilities? One out of four, okay? So now make sure you have your own question, your answer choice for this. What is the probability that Y is a carrier? And what do you think it is? Because it's a good question, because I think most people get tripped up. They might say, well, the probability that Y is a carrier, oh, well, well, that means they're right here or, or here, and it must be, you know, must be 50%, right? It's two boxes out of four. And the answer is no, it's, that's not the answer. The answer is actually going to be answer choice E, 67% or 66.666, whatever you want to call it. Why is that? You know, this is why I like this question for this exam, because you would easily, most people would go in here and say, oh, it's only two out of four, 50%, boom, answer choice D, and they move on thinking they got it right. But how do I eliminate, how do I go from 50 down to two, -thir to that two thirds of a chance that they're actually a, a, a potential carrier? Because what? I eliminate this box. How do I eliminate that box? Because if they were this box, they would have been positive. Now, we know that this person does not express the gene. So, so we know they're not this box. So how many, how many boxes are left? Three. And out of those three boxes, how many could be carriers? Two. So two out of three are the chances that Y is a carrier, okay? And that'd be answer choice E, 67%. Understand how they did that and why they did that. That's what makes this problem so good. Because then they could say, what are the chances of, if I would have said, what are the chances of Y not being a carrier? You know, I should say, what are the chances that, that the ch child Y didn't have the condition and was not a carrier in this scenario? Well, we know they didn't have the condition, but... Uh, so they didn't have the condition, so this is what makes that box, and the chance of them not being a carrier were, was what? It would have been one-third, because it had just been this box out of the remaining three choices left. Okay? So you see you see how they can ask this. I mean, this is a great, great question, because it, it makes you understand many different ways. First of all, you got to know that it was autosomal, okay? We eliminated the idea that it was X-linked uh, X recessive because dad was negative, uh, and so... You, you, you would have had dad had to be had to have been positive to give that X, um, you know, the X chromosome that would, that would have been bad. So we know it's autosomal. So you had to know that. And then when you get down here, you got to play with the numbers. And I think it's just how they're going to word it. OK, because, again, they could come up and say two parents come in for genetic testing. Both are carriers. What are the chances of their kid actually having the condition? One in four. What are the chances unknown that one of their kids is doesn't have the condition and is a carrier, that would have been two out of three. What are the what are the chances of a kid not having the condition and not being a car carrier? That would have been one out of three. Okay. So, and again, we know they're not a carrier because so we eliminate that one. Uh, you know, we 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 eliminate that box in, in, in that statement, and we eliminate this one too, not being a carrier. So it would have been one out of three. Uh, so there you go. I mean, that this is a great question. Make sure you get it right. If you don't understand it, watch it again. Okay, guys, I'll try to make some short videos that kind of summarize this even quicker so you can just kind of reinforce it. So hope it was helpful.